Ken Townsend. And this is the Worship Cafe Inspirational Radio Show. On WCIR Network. I'm going to start off the program with some scriptures. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and every one that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. 1 John 4, 7. And this one, I just want to thank God for. Um, A man can receive nothing except it be given from heaven. John 3, 27. Um, And there's so many beautiful things that I have been noticing, and I feel like God has been speaking to me a lot just through things He's been putting in my path in life. And I just want to thank God for those gifts and for um, just every second and every moment that I can um, experience His presence in my life. So today we have some awesome guests, um, uh, Connie Smith and Chris Moore. Hello, Hello guys. Hi. Welcome. How are you? Hi, thank you. I'm good. How are both of you? We are doing just wonderfully here in Nashville, Tennessee. Wow. That's great. I I just I'm so excited to have the both of you here and for you both to share what God has um given to you in your ministry. So where are you originally from, Chris? Um, well, actually, I was born in, they pronounce it Nevada, but it's spelled like Nevada, <laughs> Missouri. And I was <laughs> raised actually in the Nashville area until um, I was about 12. And then we went to Berlin, Germany for a few years. Um, okay. So so you moved, you just recently moved to, Na- to Nashville then? I just recently moved back to Nashville, yes. Okay. Yeah. So um, before we start, Connie, um, would you Mm -hmm. be willing to start off with a prayer and just give this to God? Mm -hmm. I would love to. Yes. Heavenly Father, um, we thank you so much for being here with us. Um, Lord, we praise you for all that you are. You are the giver of life. Amen. And we owe you everything. Uh, May you be glorified today and every day. And may our hearts receive all that you have. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank Amen. you. All right. So let's talk about you guys and how you guys came to um, your ministry for God. Okay. Um, do you want me to give a little backstory? Um, sure. Go ahead. <clears throat> we, uh, we met uh, on Facebook as um, just admirers of each other's ministry and what God uh, was doing through uh, both of us. We kind of saw a a mirrored um, essence of God's, um, well, the fruit of the Spirit. You know, it was just pretty obvious that God was doing the same thing in each of us. And we just um, got the opportunity to see each other's heart because the Lord was shining. And um, as we... um, got more familiar with each other's ministries. Um, Connie had asked if I would like to play uh, her events and accompany her um, uh, speaking engagements with music. And we, we talked about how that would be so complimentary. Mm-hmm. And uh, I guess it just has kind of grown from there. Yeah. yeah. And her ministry is? So, yes, yeah, so I'm an, uh, an inspirational uh, book author. Um, interestingly, never aspired to do this. Um, the, mm-hmm. My book series was actually born, uh, was born out of my journey. And, um, wow. and so, yeah, um, just to give you a little backstory um, about me, um, I, uh, I was, was raised in the church and mm-hmm. I received Jesus into my life um, at a, at a very early age. Um, I knew in my head that I was saved by God, by God's grace yes. and that he loved me unconditionally but this truth didn't really sink down into my heart until much later in life. And mm. so I lived most of my life relying on my own efforts. Right. Um, just striving to gain God's approval, striving for self-worth and perfection. And I buried myself in my career. And I had a very successful career in marketing for 15 years. But mm-hmm. as I started to reach my 40s, I started to hit a burnout. And I felt as if life in general was just becoming stale. And so I left Mm. my job to pursue a business venture um, that I thought, you know, would bring the joy back into my life. And 
interestingly, um, God had a completely different plan. And <laughs> little did I, little did I know, um, I would soon be entering a desert. And I quickly realized that this business idea that I had was not viable. And I found myself just at a complete dead end road and having no idea what to do next. And mm-hmm. at the same time, it seemed like every other area of my life just seemed to hit a, a dead end road a dead end road Mm -hmm. as well. And for several years, I just felt lost in life and became paralyzed under this cloud of depression. And I I felt disconnected from God and began to wonder, had God abandoned me? And for several years, all I could think was, how in the world did I get here? And, And how can I get out? And what I realize now is that God had stopped me in my tracks. Um, Mm -hmm. He, you know, it was time to just shake off all of the false notions and, and bring me to a deeper place in knowing him. And my heart was, was humbled and emptied out and the blinders came off and it it brought me to a point of complete surrender. And, and that's, that's what I realize now Mm -hmm. is that, you know, the Lord wanted my whole heart and, you know, it's then that we can become, who we truly are. And it's been that, um, that he can accomplish all that he wants to do through us. And it's been that we can experience Mm -hmm. the fullness of life. So anyway, so when I got out of my own way and just took that time to be still and to listen and watch for his voice, one by one, these messages of hope and encouragement began flooding my path. Love it. um, In the form of random hearts. And I had never seen a heart, and these are naturally occurring hearts, um, yep. you know, that I would just, my eye would be drawn to it, whether it was in a rain puddle or in the bark of a tree or in the strip of chip road paint, paint or mm-hmm. even pieces of trash on the road would yep. be. Um, <clears throat> or someone's hand. Was that your hand? Heart. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Or I even like burned my hand. That's what I asked him. I'm my, like, did somebody burn and, their hand? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> There's and, an even more ironic story about that. She was uh, cooking for the American Heart Association. <laughs> oh, she got a heartburn. <laughs> did a you heart give them? Burn. Did you give them heartburn? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> the heartburn, and this was one of the first hearts that I ever saw. And I see, at the time, I didn't rec- I didn't realize how significant it was. And it, it was just over the course of time mm-hmm. that my, I, I started seeing all these hearts, and I thought, oh my goodness. Yeah. These, there is something God is speaking here. And so I started taking snapshots with my iPhone Good just for, you. for my personal collection. I mm-hmm. mean, never imagined I would do anything with them, but they were so special to yeah. me and they were such gifts. And, and it's like I was finally realizing for the first time how relentless and unconditional God's love is. And it just melted my heart. And I, it's like I understood his true grace for the first time. And so I said, Lord, you know, am I, are these hearts meant to be shared? And he said, Mm -hmm. yes, it was like so strong in my heart that these book that these hearts were to go into a book. Well, I never aspired (laughs) to be a writer. So like, Lord, how is this supposed to go? So anyway, he, um, literally downloaded, uh, the, the message for the entire book in one day. And, um, it's, um, it's a it's a very simple book um, on the outside, but it's the messages are very deep, and it's like God's love. I mean, yes. God's love for us is it, it's it's very simple, but yet it's so profound. And so, so my books. Um, so since then, I have um, He's given me two more books. So there's now a series, and mm-hmm. the first two books are are meant to be read as love letters from God, and they're writ- they're written in first person narrative as His voice. And, um, and the purpose of them is, is just to, um, encourage us to always believe and always trust and always persevere, no matter what you see. challenges yeah. we face in our life, because right. we're never alone. And he's in the evidence of his love is all around us. If we choose to see it. And have you ever noticed, for instance, how many varieties of leaves are heart shaped? And yeah. I think that that is by his design, you because know, that's and, life. <laughs> exactly exactly so mm-hmm. um so anyway that's um 
that's my story in a, in a nutshell. And I'm, I'm so passionate about um, spreading this hope and this inspiration. And um, I've been so encouraged by the response to these books. And I, um, it seems almost on a daily basis I'm receiving a text or an email from someone who has seen a heart in nature and who has found such hope in that. And I mm-hmm. love people's stories. And um, I have created a community gallery on my website to showcase all of these yeah, I saw that the other day. I looked at your that, website. Yeah, it. Um, a friend of mine sent some images from a nurse uh, that had compiled cells in the human body that looked like hearts, and it was so beautiful. How, that's cool. how ra- not only random, but just how eclectic these pictures are. They can yeah. be in anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think I saw one picture on your Instagram. I don't remember, but I think it was Instagram that the guy was batting something and it's like a red turn into a red heart or a pink heart it, it, <laughs> there's no telling there have been hundreds and hundreds of pictures yeah. of people have sent in mm-hmm. so amazing mm-hmm. you know he god speaks to us in in many different ways amen you know so it's you know not you know just hearts but um, absolutely we encourage that his voice can be heard you know if we choose to be still if we choose to listen and yeah. look and, and you know and just meditate on his on his promises yes. and, and his word and and relating all of that together um on a daily basis is so important i the bigger picture and the bigger message of what you're saying to me even more is that he cares so much for each one of us that he probably leaves these messages all the time to people and they <laughs> don't really see don't see them or how, you know, I've, I really believe God can use anything to speak to someone. He can use a secular song. He can use something. He can use someone that's not a Christian. He can use, mm-hmm. he can use anything to get through yeah. to someone. And I know I, I've seen him in my life and other people's life. Like I'm blown away sometimes by, oh, just the depths that he wants to to reach our heart like in your book is such a powerful and beautiful message to people to just slow down and take Mm -hmm, a look around them um Mm -hmm. that god wants us all to slow down like your story you're working 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 you think you're doing everything right Mm -hmm. but god just wanted a little more of your time I love the book, by the way. And the passion for him to really, like, you to lose your fears, to um, trust in him. And, and look, you're now surrendering and doing another ministry, which is fabulous. That's fabulous. I love, I love the way God um, has revealed to me <clears throat> even uh, other um, similar messages through what he's doing through Connie and, well, through all of us who are, are paying attention and, and slowing yes. down and listening. Um, that, you know, he's making uh, me and uh, others realize that we have built these legalisms and bureaucracies within what we believe should be Christianity so that people can have this routine or this ceremonial pomp and circumstance. And right. it gets in the way of that personal relationship mm-hmm. with the Lord. And he wants right. us to break it back down to us and him and what yeah. that essence right. is. Right. So many times I think we overcomplicate mm-hmm. the what it means to have a relationship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And, you know, really at the end of the day, he just wants to be with us. He cares more about, you know, just simply being with us and and having our hearts um, more than what, what we can do for him. And um, because he knows that, you know, it's just, it's through being with him that that is what ultimately brings us, you know, yeah. to our true selves and, and, and bringing glory to him. Yeah. And there's yeah. such joy in that. Like, it's just so mm-hmm. freeing to it know is. that I can be doing everything that's right and taking time to spend with God, that mm-hmm. that will grow me more and mm-hmm. probably everything around me more. Mm-hmm. 
And it's uh, great to know that we can do as much as we want and we can't make him love us more and we can screw up and he won't love us any less. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And, well, that's freeing that, too. Yeah, God's that, a friend. Yeah. God's our best friend. Yeah, he's the best friend. Yes, he and he loved us before we ever loved him and, and, mm-hmm. and unconditionally and passionately. And so when I think about that, it really makes my heart just want to get closer to him immediately. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of wonder in nature to me. So like you like you said, there's a lot of wonder in like how did that just pop up there, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, th- there's definite beauty in that. Yeah, those pictures, how did they pop up? Uh, that that's awesome. Well, and, and not mm-hmm. just in her, other people getting, you right. know. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Oh, talk about right. your third book and yeah. how it Oh, Right. So, yes, yeah, so I mentioned that yeah, the first two books were written um, in first-person narrative as God's voice, as uh, meant to be read as love letters from him. But the third book um, is a response to the first two books, and it's titled Lifted by You. And it just, it's a response. It's giving praise back to God for his love and how it's changed us and how we can trust him through every situation and so it just speaks about all of the different situations we go through and 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 saying to god i choose to trust you in the midst of the storm um because of your great love kind of the essence of the um the um the message so but also what uh the pictures oh thank you (laughs) So, yeah, so um, the, the first two include, those are my own um, snapshots. Um, the third book includes pictures that other people have submitted to me. So um, about half of them are mine and half are from the community uh, gallery that I mentioned to you on my website. So it's, I love so it because it, it really showcases, um, it showcases the movement um, that's yes. happening with, you know, people, you know, finding hope in these tangible signs of God's love. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. The email almost daily of inspiration, personal, um, you know, messages of hope of how uh, people um, needed that encouragement. And, you know, it just really breaks our hearts all over again for what God is doing. Yes. And to see the beauty of his just simple love, his grace just overflowing to, mm-hmm. to the people that he's calling into his kingdom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It sounds amazing. Yeah. What, what work has been done and what what has transpired from it? Um, like definitely, when community starts um, participating, that's probably the. It's a nice message to everybody, you know. When everyone participates, mm-hmm. especially you know, your third book. Um, like I said, I saw the Instagram pictures. Well, I saw the gallery on your web page, and um, yeah, there were some really nice yep. um, contributions there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's, it's it's so inspiring. It really is. And it's good to recognize yeah. God's anointing, and and it reminds us that there's so many times when we think we know how something should be. Once God gives us an idea, but it's when He's holding us back, saying, "Don't don't run off with it yet, because He'll make it into what you <laughs> want it to be." Just trust me and just step forth in the step that I've illuminated, and I'll illuminate the next one after that. And you just keep trusting me, and I'll make mm-hmm. something beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that yeah. one scripture, trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not it unto thine own understanding. In all thy oh, ways, thank acknowledge you. him, and he will direct thy paths. Um, Mary is putting all my favorite verses today. <laughs> I love it. Told I, me I that was her favorite verse. <laughs> is it really? <laughs> That is yes. so amazing. And she had John first John four about the eight, love, yep. Prepared to mm-hmm. quote, and you quoted yep. the one right before it as mm-hmm. right before our prayer. So this yes. is so anointed right yes. now. Uh, you know, I was gonna say, what are some of your favorite prayers? I mean your verses. Uh, verses but. Yeah. You will tell me some other ones, but I don't know why God gave me those this 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 love moment. It. What, the first John four seven, yes, preceded my favorite, one of my favorite verses, which is First John four eight, mm-hmm. which is so simple, yeah, but yet so profound. And 
everyone's heard it before, but it's as God is love. Yeah. And, you know, he is not just loving toward us. He is the essence of love, the one and only perfect love. And so I just, I find such comfort in that because to me, like, I know that there's nothing that will ever keep him from loving me and loving all of us. And it's such a simple message, but it's mm-hmm. the most powerful truth that, that we can send because it's his love that changes us. And it's, yes. it's through his love that we are brought into the fullness mm-hmm. of who he created us to be. So, yes, absolutely. Your- oh, gosh. You know, I um, was thinking, Mary, when you were talking about how God works through um, everything, uh-huh. even unbelievers and, and circumstances and messages and art. And I was thinking about my favorite verse, uh, Romans eight twenty eight, is what God oh, gave wow. me when I first got saved. And I didn't know if I was doing it right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. God reminded me that, um, you know, he said um, <clears throat> that he works through all things to those who love him, who are called according to his, called. his purpose. Yeah. And that's when I realized that even through my insolence or my mistakes or my over-talking or under-talking, he's working mm-hmm. and, and that I can trust him. Uh, as long as I'm obedient, he'll do the rest. Yeah, absolutely. And also in that, I love the fact that she was sharing she was going through a rough time in her life, which every human being goes through. Yes. And it can just fill you with quite despair. It could be someone that passes away in your life. It could be a change in direction in your work. It could be a change in direction in your love life. It could be a a, a child that passes on. There's so many different things that happen to people that basically shakes up their world. And then God will work all things, all things. I love that. Because no matter what happens, he can use that for his plans and purposes. Um, And again, it's a stretching of faith sometimes and a greater knowledge of what you already have head knowledge of, but heart knowledge and your, your significance of finding hearts. Heart knowledge is much deeper than head knowledge, because that's just facts. It doesn't mean anything unless it's implanted in your heart. Yes, mm-hmm. we, we can't recognize his love uh, until we've been broken and we're on our knees in complete surrender. And then all of a sudden our eyes yeah. can be open. Yeah, and then we're like, we need you. We really need you so much. Yeah. We need you all the time, Lord. I need your presence. And you're right, everybody has their own spiritual crossroads that they have to finally come to mm-hmm. and be broken and surrender to mm-hmm. receive the epiphany. And, you know, uh, all the everyone throughout the Bible and, 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 and since, uh, since the beginning of mankind has had that moment, if they surrendered to God, they had to, to go that way. Mm-hmm. And uh, some have talked about it. Paul was very um, sincere in his... Um, yeah willingness to share with people how he had a different plan for his life and he thought he was yeah. doing right but still had to be broken to be to be on that path of, of God's perfection and so it's so great to hear people's testimonies I, I love it it takes me back to that moment in time where I was broken and I love it I love how somebody was sharing about you know how amount pretty much all the apostles end up giving their lives for their faith. And they were sharing in the worship cafe about that. And I just, you know, I I thought to myself, Jesus who dies on the cross has so much love that even the people that he's dying for that are people who who will never believe in him, he's saying, forgive them, Mm -hmm. Father. Yeah, that is so amazing. I mean, that is like so beautiful. He can be, we need to be that understanding yes. of unbelievers and people that have hurt us in our life because they don't have the same thoughts and feelings as we do, of course, because they don't have the same faith as we do. And so their thought pattern is completely different. Mm-hmm. And when they act out or they lash out, they don't, they don't have a faith to go to. They don't believe in that. They go to anything in the world. 
-hmm. And we're supposed to be representatives of that love, that unconditional love, but understanding that, you know, little piece by piece. Mm -hmm. And our humility will let that anointing be evident um, so that, so that it's more genuine than what the devil is trying to portray in the world. Um, He's giving these counterfeit um, points of solace, you know, and people will run to that. They'll run to jewels or banging on bowls or some, you know, uh, personification of what, what they think God is or spirituality is, but it's something that, that they, you know, may not attach any kind of judgment uh, to their life. And so that's more comfortable. And And also that's what the devil is trying to do is just provide this comfortable pseudo solace and they'll run to that and they'll be so distracted. They won't recognize where God's true love abides. And so it's our willingness to just get out of our own ways, as Connie said, mm-hmm. and just let God just flow through us. And and the more in line with God's will we are, the more grace will pour from us. And that's exactly where I want to be, just an open, love, yeah. filling vessel. You know, broken, but, but with God's hand holding this broken vessel together, I can hold all the grace he wants to pour in me mm-hmm. yeah. and more. You know, if, if I just trust him and clean myself out daily. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think watching Jesus on the cross um, saying forgive them is like the most broken you can probably be. (laughs) And so so loving. Such beautiful love. That's amazing grace. That is amazing amazing grace. grace. I love it. So um, tell tell us a little bit about your ministry. Uh, Mine? No, yours together. You you, you have a ministry. (laughs) Okay, um, Yes. So as, as Chris mentioned before, um, we connected um, about a year and a half ago, but it's only been like in the last few months that we really got into some conversations about how, you know, we could join forces to really um, make a difference in this world because, um, you know, there's, gosh, there's so much there's so much despair. And anyway, we, we actually met on Facebook. And so we have had, had just gotten to know each other through, um, you know, our posts and, and just, you know, I was so inspired by so many things that he was communicating and, and, and vice versa. So anyway, so we, um, over the course of time, just, uh, you know, talked about how we could um, do some things together. So I invited him to perform at the launch of my third book, which was this past um, November. And so that was the first time that we met in person. But leading up to that, um, you know, we did, as I mentioned, had a lot of conversations. And he, I'm going to let you tell this next part okay. about um, <laughs> what God um, laid on his heart. I think she knows how I like to tell that mm-hmm. story. <laughs> um, I was... Uh, I'm also a contractor, and so I was working in North Carolina at the time and, and was frequenting uh, Nashville for music and uh, had plans to eventually uh, move to, to Nashville. But um, I was just in North Carolina doing my contractor thing, and, I, and we had been talking about uh, collaborating um, our efforts. And I was uh, scheduled to play her um, book launch, and so I just – was uh, so inspired by what God had been doing through her and having um, uh, read, you know, what I knew about her books and everything and watching her posts and seeing the fruit of the spirit. And so I just, uh, one day I just had to stop what I was doing because there was such a um, flood of, of thoughts uh, that were making a song out of themselves. I just didn't expect it. And I had to stop working and go write it down. And I called her and I said, the most amazing thing has happened, you know, these, I have a verse mm-hmm. and a chorus and of a song that I'm not even trying to write, but it's so, it's so in direct line with your books and what you, what God is saying through you and what, what you've conveyed in your ministry. Um, and, um, I said, but I don't want to write a song for you. Uh, I mean, I'm, what, I'm not, I wasn't trying to, first of all, but I don't want to even finish this song if it's not anointed by the Holy Spirit. And she said, absolutely. And I, and I told her, I'm just going to, you know, take my time. If it's God's will, it'll be, it'll be confirmed. And so that very next day, as I was again working, you know, I think I was painting a living room or something. And, um, 
I, I and God gave me the rest of the song, and and it was it happened so quickly I couldn't write it down fast enough. And I called her. I said I have this entire song here that I didn't even mean to write, and uh, I would like to play it in a couple of days at your book launch if it's okay, and, and because I just feel God's anointing on this and. And I've even tried to rearrange it to what I think it should sound like. And God keeps telling me to stop messing with it, that that's what he wants. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, so the song was titled Never Lose Heart, which is the same title um, of my book. But what was so interesting to me is Mm -hmm. I don't think he knew this at the time, but God had I knew in my heart after Never Lose Heart was released um, in 2014 that there would be a song that would complement the message of that book. Mm-hmm. And so it as soon as he, said, he as soon as I heard the words to this song, I thought, oh, my goodness, this is it, um, because I, the Lord had reminded me that this song, that there would be the song even this past year. And I kept praying about it, saying, okay, Lord, well, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to write it? Am I supposed to collaborate with somebody? Or um, am I supposed to pitch this idea to somebody? And so when he, um, when I heard the lyrics of this song, I, I was like, this, this is the song. And so it was such a blessing for him to not only come to the book launch um, and perform, you know, his, his other um, inspirations, but also um, the Never Lose Heart song, which was performed for the first time. Yeah, and uh, so then I, after having such a, because uh, honestly, when I played the event, I didn't even know how it was going to go because I hadn't had time to mess with it. I had, you know, I, at one time taken the notion to rearrange it, and God said, "No, leave it alone." And so, being with that and my work schedule, I really did not have time to get back to it until the event. And mm-hmm. so it was still written in this chicken scratch. It looked like a doctor had written it, you know. And, yeah. Uh, no offense to doctors, but you know we <laughs> we've all received a, a prescription. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, see, it was it, I just played it honestly, uh, as honestly as it was given given to me, and it was uh, very well received. And um, so then I had a lot of people um, saying you need to you need to record that because it could bless a lot of hearts. And and I realized then, yes, absolutely, if it was in CD form, um, I could give it to Connie and she could, you know, give it to people as another way of, of God's message, uh, the, which is coming through the books to be mm-hmm. a, another way to be conveyed. And it would just be a way for me to just bless Connie in the way that God had uh, encouraged me to all along. And, uh, but I'll tell you, I have a little secret. Um, I, you know, of course I moved to Nashville in uh, early December and I set up my studio mm-hmm. and I recorded that song, but <laughs> I was um I had heard Connie sing in a little bit here and there and then we rehearsed for a uh caroling event that we were doing for a friend who had cancer. Mm-hmm. And that's when I realized she really can sing. Uh. <laughs> and and so God kept telling me after I recorded the song in my studio how sweet her voice would sound on it. And so I pitched it to her. I said, "Listen, how about you, how do you feel about coming into my studio and let me mute my tenor part and you sing it. And let's just see how it sounds. Mm -hmm. And at first she was apprehensive because she's not a studio artist and she's never (laughs) even claimed to be a singer. But I heard her voice and knew better. And so um, uh, once she sang on it, we both realized what a blessing uh, it was. And um, so now it's in print and uh, to have Connie singing on her own song, a song that neither one of us expected to be written uh, and, you know, she never expected to even be an author, you know, so it's just right. so many different ways that God mm-hmm. keeps dropping these unexpected blessings mm-hmm. Beautiful. Um, mm-hmm. into this, this path of his anointment. And so we're listening, God, whatever you want to do next, we're listening. <laughs> but uh, it really is, has been such a blessing so far. Mm-hmm. It's, and it, it, it was such an honor for you to ask me to sing the <laughs> harmonies on that song because as he said I'm not I'm not a trained singer and I never would have even thought about <laughs> asking to be on there but God knows that I I do love to sing so anyway um, <laughs> well, cool. let, we I'm excited to hear to this favorite. song yeah. so let's listen to this song never lose heart Break a door 
on Stretch and yawn Put the coffee on Trying so hard to remember Last night's dream So another day begins Hoping it's better than it's been Life once was so much simpler It seems But no matter what you think of all The challenges you face Let your faith be found Surrounded by God's never-ending grace And never lose heart in everything He's speaking to you Never lose heart He's faithful and His promise is true When it feels like all is falling apart He's there with you, so never lose heart Long before the world began You were part of such a wondrous plan And multitudes of blessing wait for you It's an uphill race to run But just look and see how far you've come with it Every step he's always seen you through And it may feel like you'll never have The courage that it takes But you'll be amazed at what he can do Just a mustard seed of faith So never lose heart in everything He's speaking to you Never lose He's faithful and His promise is true And there is beauty all around us From the Father above And the face of grace is found When we are grounded in His love There is passion in the purpose That He's calling us to And such magic when we can say, Lord, I'm lifted by you. So never lose heart in everything he's speaking to you. Never lose heart, he's faithful and his promise is true. Never lose heart at every turn, his heart can be seen. Never lose heart, you're walking in the glory of the King And He can heal you when it feels like all is falling apart He's there with you So never lose heart Um, and it's so beautiful how God brought you guys together um, for a beautiful plan and purpose. Beautiful yeah. song. Yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. For some reason, this scripture came to mind. Um, if I speak in the tongue of men or of angels, but do not have love, I'm a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. And I mean, it really is about love. I mean, if you do not have love, then all you are, and we were talking about before, if you have like, if you have false religion, but you don't have love for God, and you don't understand that message of love, then you're just a sounding gong. Everything you're doing is for no reason. Just the noise maker. (laughs) Yeah, it's like bong, 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 nothing. Yeah. Nothing. And you're you're absolutely right, right? But before I met um, Connie, uh, G- G- Jesus was telling me over and over, just like he told uh, Peter, you know, if you love me, feed my sheep. And he said that mm-hmm. three times. Mm-hmm. Um, he keeps telling me, if you're going to speak my truth to the people, you have to do it in love, Chris, the truth in love. Yes. A- and he has reiterated that to me almost daily. And so after meeting Connie, it just became 
so real in my life in so many ways that that's exactly the way I feel. I, I want to speak the truth only in love. I want to make friends so they will want to listen mm. to the truth. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Awesome. And of course, you want to be a friend of God and you want that personal relationship with him because we're his bride and he yeah. loves us that much. So Absolutely. understanding yeah, that is but, so important. Yeah, and I, I know that our works will not get us to heaven, but our faith will produce great works because we love the one that loved us first. Amen. Let's talk about this song, The Jesus I Know. Oh, wow. You know, that song, to me, I mean, it's so personal. But once again, it was a song that God had just downloaded onto my heart so quickly. I think I wrote that song in about 45 minutes. And it mm -hmm. just was God... Um, saying, you know, um, who is Jesus to you and how many facets of his love can you describe? And I just realized that, the, the, you know, however many ways that I can put into song how Jesus is real to me and, and, and represents love, I still can't describe him completely. So this song, you know, still does not do justice to the abounding love of God, but, but it is so real to me because God just poured it over me and the spirit just, you know, had me in tears the whole time I was writing this down. And, and I just am so blessed by it that God told me after writing never lose heart that, um, that this is the perfect song to compliment it because, you know, what is God's love? Um, uh, to us, Jesus should be the perfected personification of God's love. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah. so that was the the way to complete the essence of the the, the uh -huh. message was to put the Jesus I know right alongside with Never Lose Heart and then oh, yeah. God's mm -hmm. and especially with it being Easter I just feel that Jesus yeah. that love for Jesus and what He's done for us and how He risen. He's not He's not dead He's alive you know He he's, is he's, so alive <laughs> yeah. And people need to know that. They need to know that, that there is a risen Savior that loves you. Mm -hmm. You can call on him. He is your advocate, and he loves you, and he's praying for you, and he's always with you. And, oh, so wow. Good. All right, let's so, listen so, to this. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, well, well, Connie, um, a lot. Of, she signs a, a message of encouragement in every book she signs, but she always reminds people that he is with us and for us. And so that's so beautiful to me. Oh, I love that, Connie. <laughs> that's a great message to give to everyone. Yeah, well, I mean, so many times, you know, you hear people say, you know, don't worry, God is with you. But there's another part of that. He's not just with you. He's mm -hmm. for you. So mm -hmm. even if you're facing a challenge right now or if you're going through the desert, you know, Amen. never lose heart because he is He's always working, yes. you know, even when we can't feel his presence or or see him working. We feel like he's abandoned us. But see, he's always working. He's and, visiting tomorrow. Uh, he's preparing <laughs> us so many times in these struggles. And at least that's what happened um, in my life. You know, he was preparing me for this season and I couldn't could never have dreamed of of where he would take me. And, um, and he wants yeah. to do that. Well, there's for so all many of people. You know, he truly gives us the desires of our hearts. And I can't remember which verse it is that says that delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your, of your heart. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I was just reminded of that yesterday. It's that, it's that when we're in alignment with the Lord, when we're partnering with him, he, he's the one that, plants not only does he plant the desires in us but he you know certainly fulfills them but you know when we're aligned with him a lot of times mm -hmm. you know our old dreams may pass away but you know he he always gives us the desires of our hearts and he always knows better than we do about does. what we need exactly <laughs> that's psalms 37 4 that um Delight mm. yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Mm -hmm. So let's listen to this song, The Jesus I Know. The Jesus I Know Loves you and me The Jesus I Know 
Jesus I know Knows every need But Jesus I know Can wash every stain And in His loving eyes We're all loved the same Jesus I know Tells me I can He's always been there To hold anyone's hand And the Jesus I know He'll take you back No matter how far Jesus I know Men's are broken and weak And the Jesus I know Turn the other cheek And anybody can know His amazing grace Just turn it song i really love that yeah really beautiful chris so those two are on a new project correct that's correct the uh, cd is titled never lose heart the song 
and um, it uh, was uh, mastered here in Nashville at Yes Master Studios, uh -huh. and uh, it is. Um, uh, Chris did all the rest. Yeah. Know, he plays every <laughs> instrument and um, did the arranging, composing, mm -hmm. whatever. But, um, yeah. but yes, the Never Lose Heart EP just has those two songs: Never Lose Heart and the Jesus I Know. And it is available on the website along with. The book. Uh, there is a special uh, with free shipping uh, if you buy the book. I'm um, not to not to plug away, but uh, just so people know that it is on the website, mm -hmm. uh, neverlutesheart.com. Awesome. And also, there there are possible entries into uh, your your next CD. Right. And do you guys have yes, a, a charity or for the homeless? Um, we do actually. Do you want to talk mm. about that? How that came to fruition? Um. Yes. So, um, yes, we do have, it's in a very early <laughs> stages of development, but, um, but ever since, uh, Never Lose Heart mm -hmm. was released, God was, uh, began speaking to me very strongly about, um, supporting the homeless and reaching them with the message of Never Lose Heart. But um, I really wasn't sure exactly Beautiful. what steps to take at that particular time. But when I met Chris and I got to know his heart, mm -hmm. And especially his heart for the homeless. Um, gosh, I, he Chris is the is the kind of guy that if he sees a homeless person on the street, mm -hmm. he always stops, you know, to encourage them, to offer to pray for them, um, mm -hmm. to offer a meal, or even to give the coat off of mm -hmm. his back. And so um, when I learned that about Chris, I said, you know what? I was like, we need we need to do something, you know, especially with his, um, you know, musical talent. So right. what we've decided to do are quarterly events here in Nashville. Now I'm hoping that eventually we'll be able to spread this across the country in, in some way, but we're having quarterly events that, that, um, that feature local musicians mm -hmm. and, um, and hopefully other um, artists and artisans. But, um, but yeah, the events are um, free of charge, but we're collecting donations for, uh, the various charities that um, that are helping the homeless in some way, yeah. and so uh, anyway, and I'm also um, having my books available for purchase at these events, and for every book that's purchased, um, I'm donating one to um, well, at least this quarter, um, they're going to the Nashville Rescue Mission. Uh, they have, in addition to providing um, food and shelter, they have a life recovery program, which. Mm -hmm six month program uh, for people that are very serious about getting back on their feet and they provide amazing resources and, and hope in Jesus Christ you know, in God. order to, it's wonderful. to build that foundation and to get back um, on their feet. And so um, we were so, gosh, so excited and, and honored to be able to donate 70 books um, Great. last, uh, last time to, uh, to, well, we donated first to the men's program. They have 70, 70 men. Uh, we went to the graduation this past, yeah, I guess, a couple weeks ago yeah. just to learn more and hear their stories and Such testimonies. And so the program really, <laughs> really is changing lives. And so um, so that is what we are currently doing. And, and for anybody that, you know, would like to stay, um, stay in the loop on, on what we're doing there mm -hmm. with that. With Hearts for the Homeless. Yeah, Hearts for the Homeless or any updates on other things that we're doing around uh, Never Lose Heart and, and that part of the ministry. Um, we do have a link on the Never Lose Heart website to sign up for our, our, our newsletter. And mm -hmm. we don't send very many e This is via email, and we just send a – we don't send a lot of emails out, yeah. so yeah. nobody will get bombarded. bombarded yeah. But, yeah. again, the website is – neverloseheart.com um, if you'd like to be involved or any or even if you're uh, you know a local musician or artist or even a business owner that's looking to open your space to you know to, to for more exposure or if you'd know. like Connie to speak or mm -hmm. whatever um, to interact with us in any way mm -hmm. uh, that's a good way to, to subscribe get on the list and um, and, and of course uh, you'll be uh, notified of, of like she said any upcoming event even possibly the release of, a, of a, another musical project or book or whatever. There are a lot of things God's putting on our hearts. And that's, mm -hmm. I'm, yeah, you, and you had asked me about um, uh, musical endeavors. I, in fact, do have in about three months, I'll be releasing my Glory Road album. 
okay. which is my second solo endeavor. And we really and, want to play like this last song as we go out. Um, I'm really, I just want to say thank you to you guys for um, being on the show and everything and for sharing all your stories and your testimonies and everything that you've shared. Um, you really have blessed so many people with what you've shared. Um, well, we're I'm, blessed. I'm really excited to um, listen to your last song, Wherever I Go. Thank and you, Mary. You're welcome. Yeah, as well. yeah. You it's, a, it's an, a, a privilege to, to be here and to, um, to talk with you all. And may God bless mm-hmm. you and continue your ministry. As you. Wonderful. As you. Yeah, same, to you, same to both of you. So let's Thank listen you. to this song, Wherever I Go. But what do you know, I finally put my feet up on the heavenly road And I know He's there beside me, wherever I go Telling me to be the same through the highs and the lows No sense addressing the places I've been My Lord has set me free from the wages of sin Whoa, whoa, it's such a blessing this feeling within and I know it's worth trusting him again and again and again And I know it don't matter if my world is shattered and dreams are scattered out of control All the love of heaven will hold me forever so I know I'm never walking alone Wherever I go Don't want to navigate this world by myself I finally gave the steering wheel to somebody else Whoa, whoa, he's the one from whom all blessings flow Even if I thought he wasn't, tell me where would I go? Out of control, all the love of heaven will hold me forever. So I know I'm never walking alone. Sabe?